Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. We're going to do another video on the Alpha 3 Slicer Prusa Edition. Uh, this time specifically, we're going to remember this model. We just, uh, you might have seen this video. It, it, I will post that one before this one. Uh, it was about color changes. Well, we're back to the color change one. This is the same print. Still has the color change that I've added. But I realize I need to add a support to the chin. And if I use the auto support, it's going to be really meh. The auto supports are usually meh in most programs. Specifically Slicer, it's pretty meh. It definitely is uh, overhanded. It, it, it definitely puts way too many supports, uh, which is good. I mean, you'll definitely be well supported, but it wastes a lot of material. And uh, analyzing this print, we can definitely tell that this chin that's in midair here needs some supports. So let's go ahead and click on the model. And while it's selected, we right click and we go to Add Support Enforcer. So we're gonna go ahead and just put a box in here. And here's our Support Enforcer block. We can freely move it around. And you're like, Chris, well, this doesn't remind me of the old ones. We had to do all that weird stuff and manipulate it beforehand. And well, guess what? You don't have to do that anymore. So uh, we're just gonna put this box anywhere on the plane. And once it's selected, we can use these fun tools. So here's our little directional tools. And they move so much so much better so you can just manipulate this box and put it wherever you want and as you see this box is a little bit big we don't need to get under the chin with it so whoop, wrong object we're going to go ahead and move that back here and we can actually do other things so we can use the scale tool and we can scale this box down so we can take a look at it in different angles and scale it down this way and we can stretch it so we can make the whole column again It'll do all the work for us with all that nonsense, but if you really want to be particular, you can build that whole column there, and we can slide it this way, and slide it down this way. And again, we don't need to get all the way underneath that chin. Uh, we can go ahead and manipulate that just a little bit more. Let's grab this little green box here, and we'll slide that in a little bit like that. We can be really precise with our... Um, support enforcers and, and uh, blockers now, which is kind of awesome because it was pretty cruddy before. I mean, it worked, but that is amazing. So if we go back to our slice menu, and this will just take a second to slice because it has to do one, the color change, and also add our new support. Of course, I should probably turn supports on so that way it shows the supports. So supports everywhere. And now it's going to slice again, so we can see the support that we just added. And once it finishes slicing that support, we will see that it is right underneath the chin, except for we need to change one more setting, because remember, layers and perimeter, no, it's under supports, support material. We're gonna turn off auto-generated supports, go back to the platter, slice one more time, because that is a feature that maybe Prusa will have that in the future, but there is the support only under the chin, because it only works if you turn off auto-generated. Um, auto-generated will put all that nasty stuff all over the place. Once you disable that, you can put the supports back on, and there it is underneath the chin. And one thing I like to do on these uh, more detailed prints is change how the support looks. You can see here pretty clearly that the support is this zigzag pattern. And the zigzag pattern is nice because it comes off easy. Then we have these, um, uh, with these color loops, and that helps the print come off of the uh, supports. But I've had issues where these supports really don't print that great. So one of the techniques I do in the print settings is to help with that, is change the pattern from rectilinear to rectilinear grid. And I'm gonna change the contact distance to 0 .0, 0 instead of 0.15, only because I know this print has a little bit of an issue. Um, and also we're gonna decrease the pattern spacing to one millimeter, and we're gonna add a third interface layer that just adds one more of those uh, crazy layers. We're gonna, in, uh, in, <laughs> we're gonna turn on interface loops. We're gonna go back to our platter we're gonna hit slice again. 
And now you're going to see a much finer uh, support structure, specifically meant for parts that have a little bit more uh, detail to them. We don't want these really loose. There we go. So now we can see a much more refined structure for holding our print down. And if we go back down under the chin to take a look at this, you can see there's our loops to protect everything. And you can see the pattern is actually a grid. So it's a little bit stronger structure, which is great and definitely more stable. So for things that are a little bit, uh, uh, what do I like to say? I guess for areas that you have a lot of uh, detail or something where you don't want to, again, this, this chin is going to print in midair here. Uh, and one of the issues I had was while I was at printing, the chin would pop off, pop off. So this will definitely help that chin not pop off uh, while it's printing. So it's a little bit more support, it's a lot more stable. Uh, we also don't need this up by the flower. So let's go back and let's change this. It doesn't need to be as wide. So let's manipulate it again and get that flower out of there. That's good enough. Go back to the menu. Hit slice. Oh, it's doing all. There we go. So now I don't have that little chunk by the flower anymore. We just have the chin supported. It's going to finish up doing the slice. And let's see if our color change is still there. Color print. Yep, still got our color change. We are good to go. This print is ready to send. So that's your little tip on that. Now, if we're going to mess with the support blockers, this is where um, I don't find them as useful because they've done such a good job with um, the support enforcers. But let's go ahead and delete this little uh, bad boy. We're going to go back to print settings. We're going to go back to support material. We're going to auto generate supports. And we're just going to go ahead and click the preview. We're going to see all of the supports created and they're going to be pretty heavy handed. Uh, I haven't changed any, uh, it's still going to have the same density because I had just changed the densities and all that. So we're going to have that much finer, uh, but stronger support material. But as you can see, it's extremely heavy handed. Uh, and we can do the same thing we just did with support uh, enforcers that we can do with support blockers. So we don't need any of this nonsense down here. Um, this is going to be definitely a little bit more difficult because you can't see what's going on. But we're going to right click. We're going to add a support blocker and we're going to add a cylinder. And we'll move this cylinder down here. We're going to go ahead and manipulate the cylinder. So it doesn't need to be so tall. Oh, let me grab go back let's see percent scale in the X will definitely go back to 100% and scale let's grab all the sides and make sure we get enough to go around the base we'll move this bad boy around to get it in position because we know that base didn't need to be so covered in supports so boom get down here cover up my base so my base doesn't have supports on the hahas because those hahas print just fine without uh, the fancy nonsense and we'll we'll do a little overhead view to center that up there we go so now we have the base completely covered we'll add another blocker so add support blocker we will use I guess we'll use a box so we had a box and we don't need most of the head. That was a little excessive. We definitely need the chin. So let's go ahead and just keep it right there on the neck. We'll manipulate this box a little bit. We'll just make a big box and zoom out, move the box over the head and just make sure the chin is still covered when we're done with this. So that should leave the supports by the chin. That's good enough. Let's go ahead and resize this box a little bit more. And a little bit this way. And then again, get it off of the chin. Because we definitely want the chin supported. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put those support blockers there. Let's go ahead and go back to the slice menu. And it's reslicing right now, now that we went back to the slice menu. And there we go. So uh, it removed all those ridiculous supports. There's still some ridiculous supports left. Uh, we don't need the one by the flower. We can add a whole nother support blocker there. But it was much faster with the support enforcers. And I guess on some objects, 
the uh, support enforcer and support blocker is going to be much more important, uh, you know, using one or the other. But on this object, it was definitely better to use the support enforcer. Uh, just remember to go for your print settings. You have to go to support material. To use enforcers, you have to turn off auto-generated supports. Uh, to use the blockers, you have to turn off auto-generated supports. You cannot use them together. It's one or the either, which is fine now because it's much easier to manipulate the area that you want to get done. And it's actually super fast. I mean, the blockers are a little crude, but when we were using the support enforcer, it was quick and easy to drop an enforcer exactly where you wanted it. Um, and then you can look at what you did and be like, okay, I don't want that and remove parts of it. Like I had that flower and all that nonsense. So um, that is the bare bones essentials that you need to know to use support blockers and enforcers. So uh, I hope that helps you guys out. Uh, stay tuned for more uh, Slicer Proust Edition Alpha 3 nonsensical videos about how to use the new feature. So Stay tuned for more, and I will see you all soon.